Naomi, nice to see you. You too. So in the past, you've spent years writing what you call tomes. Um, this one was kind of a quick turnaround. Why? Well, um, I was uh, maybe a bit of a woman possessed trying to get this book out very quickly. Um, I, I guess I was worried that the way in which we were talking about Trump lacked historical context. It was sort of like treating him like this kind of Martian who came from outer space. Um, you know, he's so extreme, he's so weird, he's so unlike things we've seen before that this story was emerging, that he was almost this alien intruder. And I wanted to, to make the argument that he comes from somewhere. Um, in fact, he's very made in the USA. In um, what sense? Well, I think he's really the culmination of a great many dangerous trends. Um, so I think it's important to put Trump in context because when we treat him like an aberration, then the logical conclusion of that is, well, we just get rid of Trump and then everything's fine, you know? But you know, my concern is maybe we haven't seen anything yet because if there is, uh, you know, God forbid, a disaster like the one in London or Manchester, I mean, we've already seen how Trump tried to exploit uh, the London Bridge attack to say, well, I need my Muslim ban, or the Manchester attack to say, well, this is because of you know Ill illegal immigration and immigrants flooding into our country, even though that bomber was born in the UK. A lot of Trump's critics are trying various ways, the Russian investigation and so on, of, of bringing him down. Mm -hmm. um, you say that people can help bring him down and, and that the way to do it is to talk to him in a language he understands, which is money. What do, you, right. what do you mean? So look at Trump on his own terms, right? He is first and foremost at this mega brand that he's built over years, right? And um, what brands do, the difference between just a company that markets itself and the main thing they do is sell a product, a car or whatever it is, as opposed to a lifestyle brand like Trump that extends into you know, a line of water and steaks and a fake university. And you know, he's offering people these opportunities to really crawl inside his lifestyle. You can live in a Trump Tower, you can vacation at a Trump Resort, you can be a member of a you know, Mar-a-Lago if you've got $200,000 to spare, right? Also um, known as the uh, Winter White House. Yes. They <laughs> rebranded it as such, right? Um, so, you know, I think Trump has turned the U.S. government into an extension of his brand, and his relationship with his voters is very unlike the traditional relationship of a politician and its constituencies who have a right to demand accountability. They have much more of a fan-based relationship. It's much more about identifying with him and his family and wanting a little piece of it. So That's then how a, yeah. do you fight that? How do you harm the brand? So what is the Trump brand? What is he selling? And this is part of why the traditional scandals don't uh, stick to Trump. His brand that he has been fostering over many years is completely immoral. Right? So that's not true of every, co of every company. Some companies sell the brand of community or belonging or transformation or empowerment. You know, those are easier to mess with because then you can just sort of contrast these you know, highfalutin values that a company is selling and maybe how they're treating their workers. Trump is different because his brand is just, I'm the boss. I, you know, I'm a killer. You know, that's, that's a phrase he likes a lot, which means you, know, you do anything to win. Um, his brand is money and power. And his personal brand is being the boss who can get away with anything. I mean, you think about that Access Hollywood tape. What is he saying? Well, you know what he said, right? Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. <laughs> Whatever you want. Grab him by the <laughs> I can do anything. Because I'm a celebrity. They let you do anything, right? That's, he understands that that's his brand. That's but a you problem. had people marching in the street about that. You did, but it didn't. You know, it doesn't, didn't change anything. It didn't, doesn't change his base's relationship to him because what Trump is doing is fulfilling the promise of his brand. So it's, then, how do you change that? You're asking for people to rise up somehow. How? Well, one of the tools is to erode the brand on its own terms, showing that he is not the boss, um, that he's not as powerful, that other people are pulling his strings. That hurts him. But the main way that I think you hurt the Trump brand is it, because the centrality of it is. I am rich, and because of my vast wealth, um, you have to tr trust me to run a country despite the fact that I have no experience in that, is actually to make him less rich. So you know? how do you do that? Well, he's made this extraordinary decision not to divest from his business. Uh, he hasn't put it in any kind of blind trust. It's in the hands of his two sons who often act as political surrogates for him, and we in fact just heard directly from, I believe it was Donald uh, recently, 
who said that they're showing Donald Trump their profit statements their, regularly about how, how, the, how the business is doing. There is no firewall. He's profiting directly from this whole web of, of brands that he has out there. So they can be boycotted, and this is what's happened. Uh, the campaign Grab Your Wallet has, you know, if you go to that website, you see, you know, every company that is selling Trump products. Um, well, I see there's yeah. a few Canadian companies on there, Hudson's mm -hmm. Bay, yeah. Uh, yeah. another chain that you see here a lot, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, and mm -hmm. so you're telling Canadians, don't go there, don't buy stuff there? Well, you know, if you want to try to use this tactic, then it's, I think it's an effective one. And we have seen chains like Nordstrom dropping Ivanka's brand. And, you know, the response to that was extreme within the Trump administration. You saw Kellyanne Conway going out there and basically doing an infomercial from the White House saying, go out there and buy Ivanka stuff. It's a wonderful line. I own some of it. I fully, I'm going to just give it, I'm going to give a free okay. commercial here. Go buy it today, everybody. You can <laughs> right. find it online. So that, you know there is a tension there because the Trump base then goes responds by going out going on a shopping spree apparently. Love Trump's hate. Love Trump's hate. You know I think we saw some of this too in Vancouver when uh, the new Trump Tower opened up and there were protests outside. Um, there are moves to get the Trump name removed from various buildings because he runs as a hollow brand, by which I mean that he doesn't actually own these properties. He sells like, his name. Yeah. He sells his name. He has a few flagship properties like Trump Tower, Mar-a-Lago. He is the majority owner there. But for the vast majority of Trump Towers, Trump Resorts, these are licensing deals, right? And these are, these are developers who are paying a lot of money for the privilege of putting the Trump name in gold letters on their facades because it supposedly brings value. But that can flip. Right, because if it turns out to be a liability and people, and that becomes a kind of a toxic brand that people don't want to be associated with, um, then those developers will make a financial decision to drop the Trump brand, and we're you know, we're seeing uh, people use that tactic. Yeah, when President Trump announced that he was withdrawing from the Paris Agreement, what did you think? Were you surprised? I wasn't surprised. I think because there had been a lot of buildup. And you know, looking at what they had been doing uh, on, on climate policy, you know, cleansing references to it from their websites, appointing the CEO of Exxon uh, as Secretary of State, um, I think there's a genuine debate to be had about whether they would do, have done more damage by staying in and treating it as if it's not worth the paper it's printed on, but you're than just it. making a clean exit, and then everybody knows what they're dealing with, right? And you know, but where I, do you see Canada in that? Because in the past yeah. you've said that you think Justin Trudeau is kind of pretending that he cares about climate well, change. Well, frankly, I think Justin Trudeau has been um, you know, really playing along with Trump's brand, uh, you know, going to the Oval Office, posing with Ivanka, um, really helping her. That, you know, that was a gift to Ivanka's brand, that picture of Justin next to Ivanka you know, as she sat in her father's chair. It was quite extraordinary, really. So it's one thing to say, you know, we don't want to pick a fight with our biggest trading partner, but it's another thing to do PR for them like that. I think he should have taken a lot more heat for that. Um, even, I guess the argument yeah. was that he was trying to develop a relationship. I don't think you have to go that far. I, you know, I think that they, I think maybe you, maybe you want to certainly be civil um, in those early meetings, but I don't think you have to go so far as to do that kind of PR for Ivanka's brand, right? Well, you've accused him of pretending to care about climate change, You're suggesting he's a poser on that issue. Well, look, I'm just I'm just looking at what what, what they're doing. I think their rhetoric on climate change uh, is very good. I think I think Justin Trudeau has given some very strong speeches. Um, he raised hopes uh, of a lot of very vulnerable nations, and then went home um, and approved two new tar sands pipelines. The government of Canada has approved the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Expansion Project. And celebrated when Donald Trump announced that he was going to be approving the Keystone XL pipeline. All of this is linked to Alberta's plans to greatly increase production in the Alberta tar sands uh, by between 40 and 50 percent, which is completely incompatible with, a, with the two degree temperature target in the Paris Accord, let alone the 1.5. So all I'm saying is the math doesn't add up, right? And I criticize Trump for being more of a brand than a politician, but frankly, I think a lot of what we're seeing from the Trudeau government is also more branding and public relations. It's just a different brand. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to talk to you now. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. you.